instructor with Science from Scientists in our Minnesota office. And my background is in geology, so I love to learn about rocks and mountains and fossils, but I also love to learn about a lot of different things. So today I am learning about biology in my own kitchen. And like many of you, I have been in my home for a while now. And while I've been at home, I have been making a lot of my own bread. And it left me wondering what is inside of bread that makes it rise? Why does it have all these little bubbles in it? And I knew it had something to do with this thing called yeast, which is an ingredient, and a thing that I add to my bread dough. But I wanted to learn a little bit more about what yeast is and what it does. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video and think about what you already know about yeast. So I did a little research and I discovered that yeast is actually a microorganism, which means that it's a tiny living thing. And I also learned that I have something in common with yeast. We both really like to eat sugar. So maybe you've learned that you have something in common with yeast as well. In bread dough, yeast will eat the starches and sugar and flour. As it eats, it also burps, which is potentially something else you have in common with yeast. But yeast will burp out carbon dioxide gas, which forms these bubbles in your bread dough and allows your bread dough to rise. But yeast will also eat any type of sugar, and I wanted to learn what type of sugar yeast likes the best. I'm going to test regular white sugar and honey, but you can choose any sweetener that you have at home, such as maple syrup, stevia, corn syrup, molasses, brown sugar, or anything else you can think of. But always make sure to check with an adult in your home before using any of these supplies. I'm going to need two small plastic bottles, one for sugar and one for honey, and you can see I've labeled these bottles very clearly. It's always important to label your samples. I'm going to pour one yeast packet into each bottle and then add about three inches of warm water. You don't need to measure the temperature of the water, but it should feel like a nice warm shower. Next, I'll add my sweeteners. I'll add two tablespoons of sugar to one bottle and two tablespoons of honey to the other bottle. Then I'll swirl the mixture around a bit in each bottle. Once all of the ingredients are added, I'm going to attach a balloon onto the top of each bottle. The purpose of this balloon is to trap the gas that the yeast burps up as it's eating the sugar. We'll see if the yeast can inflate these balloons. While I'm setting up the experiment, make a prediction about which sweetener you think the yeast will like the best. checking on your yeast every five minutes. I'm going to use this data table to keep track of what happens. Every five minutes, I'm going to record if the balloon is empty, partially inflated, or fully inflated. You can find this data sheet linked in the video description below. started inflating the balloon almost immediately and filled it all the way up by the 40 minute mark. In contrast, the sugar only started to inflate the balloon after about 30 minutes and didn't fill it all the way up until almost an hour. I would imagine that this is because honey is sweeter than sugar. Even though I used two tablespoons of each sweetener, the honey is more concentrated and more delicious to the yeast. So now it's your turn. What other variables could you test? Do you think that temperature of water makes a difference? Is there another sweetener that you want to try? What about the amount of water or the size of the bottle? Come up with your own question and tell us your results by submitting the Google form linked below this video. 
Thank you for joining me for Experiment Monday. Let us know what kind of experiments you would like to see by finding us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. See you next Monday for another experiment.